how much energy is available from sunlight. Let's just say more sunlight energy strikes the surface of the Earth in one day than the energy contained in our planet's remaining oil reserves. The solar constant defines this energy as 1.4 kilowatt hours per meter squared. Of course, this is the energy available before it's filtered through our atmosphere. Once it's filtered, the radiation is significantly reduced. It will vary by location and time of day. Under ideal conditions, there would be about 1 kilowatt per square meter per hour of energy available at solar noon. Under the same ideal conditions, the heat energy available would be about 300 BTUs per square foot. Of course, solar radiation is not distributed equally throughout the world, but the United States receives more than its fair share. As you can see, most areas in mainland USA receive an average of more than 5 kilowatt hours per square meter per day, and southwestern states receive over 9 kilowatt hours per square meter per day. Solar radiation maps like this are produced by the National Radiant Energy Laboratory. These maps define the amount of radiant force applied over a 24-hour period of time. I often confuse the concept of power with energy, but you won't do that, right? Right. Remember, power is a measure of force, and energy is a force applied over a period of time. For example, a light bulb with a power rating of 100 watts consumes 100 watt hours of energy in one hour, but the same light bulb consumes 2,400 watt hours of energy over a period of 24 hours. To measure light power accurately, you'll need an expensive pyranometer. However, an inexpensive cadmium sulfide cell could be used to approximate sunlight intensity. Electronic devices are often defined by the force or power they consume. Solar collectors and solar panels are defined by the energy they harvest under a specified luminosity. As I mentioned before, on a clear day at solar noon, under ideal conditions, the radiant energy available in most USA mainland locations would be about 1 kilowatt hour per meter squared. So, under ideal conditions, 200 watt photovoltaic panel should supply 200 watts of power. If the surface area of the panel is 1 meter squared and the radiant power available is 1 kilowatt per square meter, the efficiency of the panel would be 20%. Calculating the solar heat gain efficiency of a collector is a little more complicated. The experimenter must know the radiant power available the temperature difference to and from the collector, and the flow rate of the pump. Solar heat collectors could be very cost effective. They are generally three times more efficient than photovoltaic panels, and they may be assembled from commonly available materials. The solar heat gain will of course depend on the absorber plate, the heat transfer method, the insulation, and the glazing material. Commercial collectors commonly use copper absorber plates soldered to copper flow tubes and glazing materials made from low iron content tempered glass. The problem is these materials make the collector heavy and expensive. Do-it-yourselfers use aluminum absorber plates and plastic glazing materials like sun tuff or cow wool or twin wool polycarbonate. Evacuated tube collectors are popular. They collect heat at high temperatures because the vacuum tube provides an ideal insulation barrier against heat loss. Unfortunately, the ideal insulating properties of the vacuum prevent snow accumulation from melting. Another problem has to do with leaks that occur at the junction where heat is exchanged. A closed loop system with a pressure relief valve works, but trade back systems should not be used with vacuum tubes. The sudden surge of cold water on extremely hot heat exchange tips could be problematic. 
For detailed information about the quantity of radiant energy in your area, Google NREL Solar. Solar energy maps express the average solar energy available per day. Under ideal conditions in mainland USA, one kilowatt hour per square meter is available. The solar heat equivalent of this would be about 300 BTUs per square foot. To precisely measure solar power directly, you'll need a pyranometer. To approximate the solar power available, you could use a cadmium sulfide cell. Visit JC Solar Homes for, for more sunlight information. Thank you for your You came along and picked the clouds from my mind. I could have sworn you turned the water into wine. And now I'm chasing dreams but falling far behind. But that's all fine. Who am I to change? Bell's been lifted now, I'm looking at your face. But I can't help to think it's not the time or place. I'd hate to call fate's bluff and make a huge mistake, but that's okay. Who am I to change things now? Who am I to change the way things have been? To dive a little deeper in the pool that we fell in. I only hope I don't live long enough to regret what I'm missing. The whispers grew into a deafening young roar. The tables turned, but in whose favor I'm not sure. And now time's beating out of rhythm at our door, but that's all right. Who am I to change things now? Who am I to change the way things have been? To dive a little deeper in the pool that we fell in? I only hope I don't live long enough To regret what I'm missing